So hello again. Thought I would share with you my newest purchase. Got uh, alerted to this not too long ago. Thought I would try it out. It's always good to have a carbon monoxide detector. This is my old trusty one. I've had this one for coming on two years now. And when I get a carbon monoxide detector, I've had videos about these things before because they're so important. Uh, you try to get one that uh, is either aviation specific or has a very uh, low reading on there, I guess that's how you say, but uh, threshold uh, for detection. Like this one is eight parts per million and the alarm goes off uh, after, what is that, 60 seconds? Yeah. And then your second alarm, uh, which is a bit louder uh, and you know, flashing lights, of course, is uh, 25 parts per million at 60 seconds. Um, pretty good little things. Uh, it runs on little uh, button cell batteries, 2032s, I think, and very easy functionality. Has a little case that you can sticky to the panel there, so this is uh, this is done well. I had to test out, uh, you know, this to see if there's a big difference um, in functionality. I mean, honestly, when you get down to it. You're really just wanting to see if uh, carbon monoxide is creeping into your cabin. It causes all kinds of issues for you. Um, up into you passing out. That's not good while you're flying. All right, so we got a little pamphlet here. And before returning, please allow us to help you. Well, that's nice. I noticed that uh, this is a U.S.-based company. That's pretty cool. Got the phone number and email right there. Um, website looks pretty sturdy. And this is, uh, this is for aviation. So made for these type of aircrafts, pistol driven aircrafts and other aircrafts that could introduce carbon monoxide into the uh, environment there. All right, so with this one, I'll pop the specs up. The, uh, I've done a review. I'll try to link the video to all that fancy stuff, but Let's go over this one real quick. Zero to 500 parts per million. Display zero to 2,000 parts per million. All right. Resolution all the way down to one. Accuracy plus minus 10%. Zero to 500. Response time five seconds. T90 response time less than 20 seconds. Don't know what that means. Should look it up. Let's see here. Battery life two years. And CO alarm points at 35 parts per million and 200 parts per million which actually that's not too bad um, because this one is very sensitive it's at 9 and 25 uh, let's see here it's got vibration for the pro and then audio and visual alarms uh, for all of them okay that's fair enough with these, you want to make sure, uh, because of the sensor in there being so sensitive, that uh, you don't put them in direct sunlight. I, I did learn that. Uh, also, you can mess with your display. You don't want that. All right. This is the rest of the information there. I mean, it's pretty simple, it looks like. Nothing too crazy. It's got a little mounting bracket. Let's see if there's anything... Exciting on the back. They always give a little chart here. Okay, it's got calibration mode, but I don't mess with that because these things come pre-calibrated. So it's got a little clip. Man, got a little clip. This thing is a serious clip. It looks like holy smokes. See that thing? That is a clip. And then it's got the little bracket there. I can see now that this can mount permanently it looks like or you can probably put a little sticky pad like i do on mine or just use it like this and whew, that big clamp in there this thing has got some weight it's got heft to it I and mean, look at this between this one very interesting i don't know if that's a mark of anything in particular but you can see that this guy is much 
Maybe not more thick, but bigger and heftier. Instructions here. How to mount. I think we figured out that one. All right, let's figure out how to turn it on. Yeah, this. Let's just push down the button and see what happens. All right, that's the calibration that usually occurs on all of them. About 10 seconds, and then it should read zero. Brilliant. It's got the max setting on there, which we've never used it, so it won't show. But I'll be interested to uh, see. I'm going to fly in a few minutes. I'm going to carry both of these with me uh, in the seat next to me because it's a lot easier. And then see if uh, see what we get for readings and see if there's a large disparity disparity difference between these two. All right, let's check it out. All right, so final impressions, I guess. You know, how much can you say about a carbon monoxide, monoxide detector? But, you know, I'm going to do my best. So I've been sitting here for, I don't know, probably three minutes or so. Uh, engine is shut off and all that type of jazz. And I'll even give it the benefit of the doubt here. I'll open the door a little bit. Now I do have my uh, window hatch open. I always leave it open um, and this is still registering so let's let's give it the best chance possible like I said it's been about two or three minutes now and I want to see if it goes down to uh, to zero there's no aircraft in the immediate vicinity nor uh, automobiles now granted one part per million is extremely low. I just shut the door because I think that it is good, definitely good enough. It probably, uh, you know, far superior to cheaper um, carbon monoxide detectors. Uh, definitely far superior than, you know, the ones that you would get from Home Depot or something like that that's for home use. Um, this is, these are well cal calibrated equipment. So, Things that I like, things that I don't like, and kind of in the middle. So right up front, uh, kind of comparing the two. Um, oh, there we go, zero. I like the form factor and size of my original one. It is smaller. It's definitely less heavy. Um, I like the fact that this has multiple mounting options, I guess. So you can hang it on something. You know, it's got this little loop. You can clip it on something, although that clip is serious, so make sure you don't damage anything you're clipping it on. Uh, or you can use the little adapter to, you know, I don't know why you would want to drill it in your plane somewhere. That seems like a bad idea, but, um, you know, you can put a sticky thing on there and, and stick it on there like a command strip. Uh, I use those for just about everything I don't want to permanently attach uh, stuff to. Um, this has uh, this had something similar uh, as a little clip, but as you can see, the back is flat, so that makes it prime to get one of uh, those, you know, command strips or whatever to just, you know, stick it to whatever you need to do. Um, the I don't see an expiration date on here, and I looked through the book um, before jumping in the plane, and I wasn't able to see one there. Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, if you order it, um, you kind of have to generally think that it's within that year and, you know, these things last only a few years. Um, kind of like the thought of having like an actual expiration date. Uh, it seems like it's very sensitive as you saw in the pictures there. It's very comparable to this one. So that makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, it's not like this one's saying, you know, 100 parts per million, and this isn't saying one. Uh, so I think that the sensors in here are probably pretty comparable. 
Um, speaking of the sensor, the sensor is in the front. So I don't know if that's good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, with this one, the sensor is in the back. It's that uh, little thing in the back there. If I can pull it out. There we go. Uh, none of my flying met the criteria for either one to trigger the alarm. Um, so there was no alarms going off or anything like that. Uh, what I might do, and I don't know, maybe restart the engine and then try it again with maybe the door open or the window open or something to that effect to try to get some uh, past the thresholds. Uh, again, the thresholds on uh, this one seem to be a bit higher uh, than this guy, uh, but to be completely honest with you, I think I would kind of uh, go with this one. Um, because I would want to know right up front what's going on. Uh, you know, a carbon monoxide detector alarm is not an annoying alarm in the sense of uh, it is a safety device. So I want it to uh, alarm and tell me what's going on. Uh, also with the flashing light here, you can definitely see it uh, even in daytime uh, with the alarm and the flash. With this one, I am sure it has got a flashing light, and I know for certain it's got an alarm. So let me see if I can figure out some crafty way to trigger that. Outside of that, form factor, where the sensors are located, the reliability as far as them agreeing with each other, um, and having pretty much the exact same functions where it shows you the max. Um, you can see the max uh, on each one. Uh, the year, uh, you know, the as, as far as um, two years of battery life on each of them. Uh, and let's see if I'm missing anything. Oh, yeah, mounting. Uh, more options, but honestly, since it's a smaller form factor, lighter, and has a flat back, you could just mount this probably just as easy. Um, I'm not missing the I'm not missing the clip and hanging it with one of these guys. Seems like it would be definitely kind of a swinging operation. I don't want anything swinging an airplane. All right, so let me see if I can't figure out the uh, the alarm function here, if I can trigger it. Um, I don't know, we'll see. So that's pretty much what I got out of the two. I think I'm going to keep this one for its uh, life. Um, you know, the rest of the life it's got on it. Uh, and I might keep this and put it somewhere else, but I'm just going to get a command strip and stick it right back on my, uh, on my dash there. All right. Well, till next time, talk to you later.